Sit. Down. Yes. Hello again, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to break down how I shot and lit those little scenes that you saw right before seeing my face. Um, as you can see, uh, both scenes had the same exact location and more or less the same compositions and very similar blocking. Um, I lit them using almost exactly the same uh, setup and framework with a couple of variances here and there and obviously differences to the lighting ratios. Um, for the daylight shots, we start off with this uh, far side key here, which is my Falcon Eyes uh, 36 TDX, you know, the, the big flat panel. Um, it's an easy light for me to move around by myself. I shot this alone with no crew, so I had to keep things very light and simple. And that was my key light. Enter the 600D, which is uh, turning this otherwise boring living room into a really nice uh, ethereal, sunny kind of scene. It's got a regular reflector dish, a uh, half CTO on it, and it is just firing through these blinds and adding some much needed texture and interest and layering into this otherwise boring white living room, which would be very bare and boring to look at without it. For this shot, I have this uh, blanket here that's kind of acting as a negative fill, kind of absorbing some of that light. But uh, for those shots, I actually had a large V-flat set up. I just didn't feel like setting it up right now because I was being lazy. And then for the variety of close-ups, um, this was the lighting setup. I didn't really change anything. I might have moved this light around just a little bit to shape it differently, but otherwise very consistent, very simple. Once it was set up, didn't have to do much. For the wide shot where I am uh, feeding my dog, I actually took this light out altogether. That is lit entirely with the 600D and some haze. I brought up the levels in the shadows. And with wider shots like that, you can get away with more dramatic lighting. You can keep it much simpler. Um, often you have no choice because with wider shots, it's harder to keep lights out of your scene. You could shoot locked off like I'm doing right now um, and then just mask the lights out in post. But sometimes you gotta move the camera. Sometimes uh, your talent needs to walk in front of the lights. So it's okay. Uh, as long as your um, lighting stays consistent as far as its direction, and its color and where the lighting is being motivated from, you can get away with uh, more dramatic lighting for your wides and softer, more diffused lighting for your tights and mediums. Um, now we transition into the night shots and we have pretty much the same exact tools at our disposal in the same exact scene. Obviously it's much darker because it's shot at night so the contrast ratios are gonna be a little bit different. This time the main key light is coming from the television instead of the window and I have the same exact light panel set up, this time using the bi-color capabilities of the Falcon Eyes to keep it at a cooler temperature. And um, that is to match the television. The red's white balance was set to like 4,000 more or less to bring down the entire warmth of the image, something cooler. Um, added just more blue to the entire scene. Outside, we had some Astera Titan tubes uh, playing the same role, just bringing some blue light into the scene, adding to the overall ambience. And this time I had the Aperture 300D with the Leco mount, and that was creating uh, the thunder effects that you saw. I had the lighting effects set to some thunder uh, with some cookies in between, and that was just giving a little bit more texture to the overall scene. 
lots of shadows. I was going for a moody, stormy, moonlit kind of uh, scene to the, to the whole feel. And that was pretty much it. For some of the close-ups, since this light behind me was turned on, I did have a very small uh, Luxley uh, cello, I think it's called. That was just kind of boomed overhead, providing some warm light on, on myself uh, to make it look like it was coming from this lamp. But otherwise, it was the same exact setup. Uh, this time for the wide shot, I did leave this light in the shot because I want the key light on me to look like it's coming from the television instead of the window this time. So I wanted to keep that consistent. And I was just cognizant enough to not, you know, not walk in front of it. Um, for both scenes, the final shot of me approaching to the kitchen was lit exactly the same way. I did add a third light which was uh, Falcon Eyes 18 TDX. It's a similar light to this one. It's a little bit smaller. It's hanging on a Manfrotto polecat uh, right above the scene. And that is providing a hair light. In the daylight shot, that hair light is being motivated by the window light. In the night shot, it's being motivated by the lamp that's lit behind me. In both cases, I didn't move it. I didn't touch it. I left it exactly the same. If I was to use the Edison bulb that I would turn on as my actual key light, it would look very harsh, very unflattering. It would be blown out because I would have to crank it up to full power and it would look atrocious. So I didn't do that. I kept the Edison's output at a very minimal power so that I would have hardly any effect on the scene. And I just moved this light uh, to camera right into the hallway, just out of frame. And that was providing the light on myself. It was providing a much more cinematic, much softer light source while still emulating the effect of being lit by the light bulb. And then in both cases, um, the, the, sh the light coming in from the window was just adding to the ambience, creating shadows on the wall. And in both the daylight and the nighttime scene, we did use plenty of haze because haze is awesome. It looks cinematic, it provides some fill light, and it just looks cool, and I use it whenever I can. And that is pretty much the breakdown for the two scenes. And what I really wanted to demonstrate was how simple lighting can be when you're not trying to force it, when you're not trying to fight or overpower what's already there. If you just look at your scene, in this case, a very boring, basic living room, I had you know, a television and a light and a window as my practical light. I was like, okay, those are my lighting sources. What can I do to emulate, to enhance, uh, to shape and to augment this scene? So for the daytime shots, I was going for a dreamy, midsummer afternoon, very ethereal, very moody, and I was able to do that by using the blinds to cut some of the ambient light that was actually coming from outside, uh, lowering the exposure on the camera, and then using the lights to kind of just play with the shadows and the shapes, keeping everything consistent, everything natural looking, um, and adding some haze. And then for the night shots, same concept. Um, again, very white room. It was very easy for light to just fly everywhere, so underexpose the ambient, uh, turn on my practicals, exposed for the practical so that they're not overexposed, and then just use my lights to shape what was already there. So nothing too complicated. I shot this by myself. I set it up by myself. I lit it by myself. So if you're working with a small crew or by yourself, this type of thinking is the best way to get the most use out of your time without overcomplicating things, without going over time, without having everybody else kind of wait around till you finish. Just you know, get into the mindset of thinking about what is already here and how can I use that to my advantage? And in that case, what lights can I bring in? So that brings us to the end. I hope you found this valuable, useful, insightful, all that jazz. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.